tooling in miniature. I'm going to be going over all sorts of things you're going to need to learn how to tool. I'll be working in 1-9 scale, which is Brayer Traditional. You can also do this in classic dollhouse scale, 112, and Rio Rondo has a saddle set in that scale as well, or take it up to 1-6, which is Barbie scale. Now, I am not an expert in leather carving, but I think we can get through this. Uh, I'll be discussing tools, different leather, lift different leather, carving styles, and uh, a lot of what you're gonna need to know so that you can work on your own miniature projects, including finishing the saddle that we've started. First, I'd like to cover off different types of tooling you'll find on the Western saddles. Uh, first is a California style, and I will include the, uh, this image in the link below if you wanna have a look at it. Uh, the California style is um, very ornate, um, with lots of flowers, and it's much very natural. You find uh, the flowers do look more like flowers, they're not as stylized. Uh, it's a very ornate and the common style of tooling. The Sheridan style is a stylized floral pattern. It's meticulous, orderly, repetitive, and you'll often find it antiqued. Uh, Don King has a beautiful style, and again, you can see this picture in the image I provided. The Arizona style is a less expensive method made more for cowboys. You often find it um, larger patterns, uh, less repetitive, and um, uh, generally a mix. You'll find an all over pattern with some stylized floral or similar kind of patterns. Then you get the all over geometric, which uh, transfers really well into miniature. And it's basically a stamping tool done throughout the entire, entire saddle. Uh, a similar one is basket weaving, a basket weave pattern, which is a basket weave tool over the entire saddle or in sections. And the last one is border, where they just run a border around the entire saddle. It can look also very nice. Uh, where you leave areas blank is also important on a saddle. So once we get through this tutorial on, on leather carving, you will decide what style you want to do your saddle. Um, you will not be very good at it at first. Uh, to be a good leather tooler takes years of practice and with a miniature style, it's much harder. I've worked mainly in full size, so I find these little tiny tools very difficult. You have to be meticulous to make it look perfect. However, there are, there are ways of doing it that makes your saddle look excellent without a lot of practice. So let's get to it. To start with, you'll need some leather. When you're making a saddle, in size small, you're going to be using 1.5 to 2 ounce leather, which is about a millimeter thick. And you can get all of that from Rio Rondo. I have a scrap from Tandy's here, which is around three millimeters thick that I'm gonna be using for showing you some of the uh, tooling techniques. But when you're practicing, before you do your saddle, make sure you practice on the thin leather because it's easy to go through if you're not careful. Whereas this you can pound and you're not gonna damage it. So there is a difference between stamping and tooling leather. Stamping is when you buy uh, a picture on, the, on one of the stamps and you, you know, Stamp it with a mallet and you'll get a flower or a horse head or something like that. And generally you find that on belts and uh, not on saddles. However, the basket weave is a stamping tool as well as some of the background tools. Leather tooling and carving requires a knife where you cut the leather, the surface of the leather, and then you push the background away from that stamp so the flower or whatever you're carving stands out. And that is what is generally used in most styles of leather carving. Okay, let's talk about tools you're gonna need for this job. Uh, first thing I would recommend is a carving knife. It's a swivel knife, fits in your finger, it turns. And for the blade, I would recommend an angled blade, fine angled. You can get these from Rio Rondo, or you can get these from Barry King. This is a Barry King piece. And I'll be giving all this information separately as well. Next, you need some sort of mallet. You can get something like this from Tandy and Barry King. At the moment, I don't think uh, Rio Rondo has them, but they often do. These little things right here, 
That's a 0 0.02 and a 0 0.03 mechanical pencil without lead. What I use those for is punching holes. They're fa fantastic for punching holes in leather. And you can get those from Amazon. They're hard to find anywhere else being a, a 0 0.02 or 0 0.03. A uh, very fine paintbrush for applying uh, stain if you're doing any design. Uh, something I don't have here right now, but a fine uh, and regular tip Sharpie. Uh, one of these things you get in your school set for a dollar. Some sort of finish for your leather, uh, such as Super Sheen. Uh, you can get that from um, Rio Rondo. Finish uh, dye for your leather. Again, Rio Rondo or Tandy. And a selection of uh, stamping and carving tools. In selecting your tools for carving and stamping, it's important to get them extra small, as small as possible. Now I'm gonna hold up what I have right here. Now, I believe all except uh, the cedar are from Barry King Tools. In the, uh, I'm gonna attach a list of what I have. And uh, with Barry King, he also does custom tools. So it may take a while to get them. He uh, is very busy, but his work is excellent. He will also make, do maker's marks for you. Now, as they're expensive, very expensive, what I would suggest is picking out something to start with. Um, to start with, you will need a knife for carving and probably a cedar and you will have to have a beveler. Bevelers are quite important. First tool I'm going to show you is a border tool. This is a Barry King serpentine tool and what it does is create a border, obviously. And things with this is usually you can reverse them and you can have a single border or a double border. The next tool is a seed tool and uh, this one is from Rio Rondo. It's the small, the small seed, and it's a 724. And this is good for making flowers. Very simple stamp. And the next two are background tools. And this is what we use to push down the leather. Uh, one of these is a fine, fine hatch, and the other one is more coarse. And with the shape of them, the little points can get into harder to reach places. And with miniatures, they can actually uh, make flowers if you really wanted to do as well. Get a cedar and make a little stamped flower. Now the swivel knife allows you to create your patterns and having the very small knife like this, you can go around and make different shapes and curves. And we'll be talking about that quite a bit. Now, when you have lines, you're gonna need a beveler tool. And what the beveler tool does is make your pattern stand out. These are very useful in miniature work too, because you can make a pattern while you go just using that tool. You can see the beveler pushes the leather down. Of course, in the finer leather, we won't be hammering like this. The next tool is actually a Barry King custom piece. And I like this little tiny thing for doing all over patterns. 
you turn it and match it up properly, you can do quite interesting patterns with just a simple tool and it's so quick. Right there. The last tool I have to show you that I have is the basket weave tool. So I'm just gonna draw a line. Basket weave tool, you meet edge to edge along the line and take a lot more care than I'm doing right now. And it creates a basket weave pattern. We'll have a little look later making that a little nicer. The next thing I'd like to mention is the board for stamping. This came from Tandy Leather and is used for stamping leather. You also need some water and a sponge because you can only stamp properly on wet leather. Another must have tool is a pounce wheel. Uh, these are also available at Rio Rondo and they are used for doing stitch lines along the edges of leather. Can be used for bridles or halters as well as saddles. If you're not ready to invest in leather working tools, what I would suggest is some small screwdrivers, uh, nail tools that uh, all sorts of neat things you can find in a beauty salon, pins, and you can actually work leather. And I would suggest a miniature set. I don't have one, and make marks that'll work in miniature using different tools that you can find around the house. It's a good way to get started to see what you, th what you think. I'm not gonna touch on this anymore during the rest of the video, but it's just a concept. If you can find items around the house to act as tools. I'd like to wrap up this first video on tooling leather. Uh, you can also purchase tools from other places. If you look on Etsy, places like Toolpaw, or the likes have uh, actually quite inexpensive tools in, in the micro size. Uh, going forward in the next video, we're gonna cover off uh, how to use the tools and how to actually utilize them to make the saddle or to make other items. So I will see you next time in the next video. Pepper, come on. Pepper and I say goodbye. <laughs>